Hello, MMJ3331D, news reporting and writing hybrid. I have made a video for you all, now that you have pitched your story ideas for the politics story, um, which is all about covering a government meeting. I'm going to talk to you about how you should approach this story, uh, namely how you should approach covering uh, a, or, or journalistically going to a government meeting. I just want to clarify something from the instructions really fast. It notes in the instructions that at least half of the story has to be about one issue. Now what that means essentially is that you need to find something at the meeting that ends up being the story. The meeting itself is not the story. What was discussed or was argued about or was voted on at the meeting is the story itself. This mimics something we talked about when we were going over speech stories. The fact that someone gives a speech is not the actual point of the story. What they say at the speech is the story itself. The fact that there's a city council meeting is not the story. They have those every other week, nearly. Uh, it's What actually is the story is stuff they vote on and discuss at the meeting itself. Uh, which means you need to go into the meeting that you've pitched with uh, a story to tell. Look for the things they have voted on. Look for, the, look for the things they're debating with each other and make that sort of the core aspect of the story. Now, the rest of the story, after 50%, you can sum up other things they talked about, but for the most part, at least half the story needs to, about, needs to be about an issue that uh, came up during the meeting. I just want to stress early on that this is a very important kind of journalism that you're doing. This is the kind of journalism that keeps uh, people doing the right thing, it keeps people... Um, honest in, in a certain way. This is journalism that's shining a dark, uh, shining a light in a dark room often, oftentimes. Um, just so you know, the, the reason why you're entitled to be at these meetings and the reason why you should be at these meetings as a citizen is thanks to Georgia's sunshine laws. Uh, Georgia has a very robust set of open records laws and open access laws as a part of their state constitution. This is something I'll actually post to the course folio site it is a list of a citizen's guide to open government. It's by the Georgia First Amendment Foundation. They're a really good group of folks. Uh, and so I was going to print this out and hand it to you all, but it's a little bit long. So I'm just going to attach the PDF to the uh, folio site. As a part of the law in the state of Georgia, meetings have to be open by default. Just to read a quote from this, the law requires that government meetings be open to the public. The law also requires government bodies to provide reasonable notice of all meetings which means that they cannot close the doors on you. They can't kick you out of the room. Any meeting between two or more people has to be announced ahead of time and has to be open doors. And if people are not following this, uh, they're serious about it, right? You can get fined up to $1,000 civilly. You can get fined up to $2,500 criminally. You can also find yourself uh, in all sorts of trouble criminally uh, if you violate these rules. So these meetings have to be open. Now the problem is that just because these meetings can be open doesn't mean people actually go to them. If you go to a lot of city council meetings, you'll find that you may be the only one actually there. So it's important that we exercise our duties as a journalist. Uh, it's important that we as reporters are telling people what's actually going on at these meetings. They are able to go to it themselves if they want to, but many don't. So let's, let's explore our duties as a journalist and let's be the ones who report on this. Oftentimes, and I know I've sort of said this before, a reporter in the room is going to be the only difference between local government doing whatever it wants to do and doing what it should be doing. So you're actually, even as a student here, you're doing a very good service by going to these meetings, attending them, and keeping an eye on them. Keep in mind that in the state of Georgia, there's really two ways of approaching local government. Like What we have here is a split local government. So there is the city of Statesboro, which has a city council. And there's the Bullock County Commission, which has their own sort of board of, uh, of governors. The idea is that, go is that they approach their own governments in different ways. There's overlapping laws where something that affects the city may not affect the county as a whole, but something passed at the county level may affect both. We'll take a look at this at a later class, but just know that the uh, city, of count uh, city council uh, for the city of Statesboro and the uh, board of Commissioners for the Bullock County uh, Board are going to be two different governing bodies that have some overlap. The state of Georgia is kind of unique in that some places around the state have actually consolidated 
like Macon and Bibb County have actually sort of squished themselves together to be one thing. There's not a separate city council and county commission. They're the same thing now. So wherever it is that you pitched and wherever it is I have approved for you to go and report on, just take note of what it's like, what their actual system and structure is. We'll talk more about that in a later class though. But let's start here and say, hey, if we're gonna go cover a government meeting, what do we actually do? All right, so first we need to plan before we actually go to the meeting. We need to look for the calendar of the meeting itself, the agenda. Uh, this is a screen grab, but I'm actually gonna pull the internet up, real, internet real, up real fast here so you guys take a look at it. Uh, this is the website for the Bullock County Commission. Uh, and I've pulled this up just so you can check it out. Notice that under the meetings, you've got October 3rd, 2017 at 4.30 p.m. This would be their commission meeting today on October 3rd. And notice there's two things here. There's an agenda and there's an agenda packet. The agenda is going to be just a quick list of what's occurring at the meeting. It's going to be just a really sort of informal listing time-wise. The agenda packet is going to be the more detailed of the two. Uh, so the agenda will look something like this. It'll just be a quick timeline of what they're going to cover. This is a couple pages long and you can really easily print this out and bring this with you. Now the agenda packet is 128 pages long, so you're not really gonna be able to print this out. And this is every single addendum and memorandum and every piece of documentation that they need for the meeting all in one space. You can tell because it's a little askew that someone has actually scanned this in using a copy machine. You're probably not gonna wanna print this and bring this with you, but you do wanna find it, download it, and save it because your story may need you to reference some of this stuff and quote some of this stuff and attribute some of this stuff. So find your agenda and find your agenda packet. And like I said, print the agenda off. It'll be useful when you go to the meeting itself. Now we wanna do a little bit of background research, right? Now, otherwise, if this can kind of feel chaotic, how are you as someone who's never paid attention to local government before supposed to fall into this world and understand what everything means and what everyone's doing? Well, conveniently, what you can do is look at past meetings, right? So there's a, here a list of the past meetings from September. Uh, you can find the agenda and the agenda packets for those meetings, as well as the summary and the minutes. The summary is really useful because the summary is just a basic rundown of how everybody voted, things they discussed and debated on, and how long they spent debating and discussing them. If you're going back in time, what you wanna do is look at the meeting that's before the one that you're reporting on to see, hey, what did they talk about then? Is there anything from back then that's going to come up in this meeting. You want to make sure you bring plenty of pen and paper, a video recorder if you're going to do multimedia that way, and an audio recorder is very useful so that you won't miss anything. Now it's important that you don't fall into the trap. There's a, a trap that lures in new writers to this kind of thing, and that is trying to cover this thing chronologically. That's not the point. If you tried to cover this thing chronologically, every single story about a city council or about a county commission would look like this. The Bullock County Board of Commissioners said the Pledge of Allegiance and took their, or took role to begin their regular meeting Tuesday. Like who cares? Every single meeting would start the same way. The important things that happen at the meeting uh, are the things that are going to go first in your story, but not always the first thing that's going to happen in the meeting itself. So what we have to do is structure the things that happened in the meeting uh, in a inverted pyramid style when we go to actually write it. So we're putting the most important stuff at the top and the least important stuff at the bottom. And all of this comes down to knowing what the parts of the meeting are actually going to be. And it's really useful for you to know this stuff before you launch out into the world and go to your first meeting. The meeting is going to start very boringly. It's going to start with a call to order and a welcome to media and visitors. The call to order will be someone banging a gavel and saying, hello, we're now in session. Hey everybody, how you doing? They'll then maybe have a pledge of allegiance or they may have a moment of silence or a prayer. And then they'll have roll call where they will uh, check to see if all of the county commissioners or city council members are actually there. None of this matters journalistically, but it is the start of the meeting. Now, here's where the first of our important parts start to come in. There's always going to be some time set aside for the public to speak. There'll be a microphone set at the front of the room and everyone can give their name and address, walk up to the microphone and yell at the city council members if they don't like something that's going on. 
It'll look like this in your, uh, in your agenda normally. It'll say something like public comment, and it'll say that it's for the audience. Now, you want to pay extra careful attention to this. You can get great story ideas through this thing. Namely because, if you think about it, nobody goes to city council to talk to public comment and say about how everything is going just fine in their lives. People go when they're angry or they're upset or they're disappointed or they feel like something bad is happening around them. They'll go and they'll voice their concerns to city council. So pay attention to what they're saying. It's probably going to come into some use for you. Next is the consent agenda. And the bad thing is nothing really good is ever going to come from the consent agenda. You'll notice that the consent agenda is a uh, list. Oops, sorry about that. The consent agenda is a list of things. Here's there's three things listed under it. The consent agenda is a list of things that they collectively feel like there's no debate on, that they don't have to read multiple times. They can simply all vote yes and get the same result. So what they do is they list everything up. They vote on everything exactly once. They say, hey, does everybody agree? under the, or to agree to vote yes on everything in the consent agenda, everyone says yes, and they all move on. So because it's simple and because it doesn't require debate, it's also usually not very newsworthy. Speaking of not very newsworthy, proclamations are not very newsworthy. Proclamations are stuff like, we're so proud of Boy Scout, for, Boy Scout Troop 410, uh, they are the best Boy Scout troop, and we proclaim that they are the best that's ever been. Um, they are awards given to people in the community. They are recognizing people's achievements. And they're really great for the community, but as far as news coverage goes, they're really not all that exciting. Now, what you want to pay close attention to after all that stuff is done is anything that has to do with specific city or county business. Sometimes it will show up in meetings like new business. Sometimes it will show up as stuff under second vote. More on that in a second. But these are the things, these Ordinances and resolutions, these are the things that you want to pay attention to. These are the things that will be newsworthy and will be the things you'll write about. Which brings up an important question here. What is the difference between a resolution and an ordinance? A resolution is the general opinion, approval, or, or disapproval of a governing body. Sometimes it's connected to a direct or specific action, too. So namely, it is the council or commission saying, we all agree on this, or we think this ought to happen. You'll see way more resolutions because they are, unlike ordinances, non-binding or non-enforceable. So an ordinance is something that is an enforceable piece of legislation that, if it's passed, becomes the law of the city. So let's think about it in terms of an empty lot full of tall grass that everyone hates. If people start complaining about these, this lot with tall grass to city council, the city council may pass a resolution. The resolution says we agree to use city mowers to go out and mow the lot grass down. That may be the resolution. We all agree this is what we're going to do. A city ordinance may be, according to this new ordinance, any grass higher than knee high or higher than a foot and a half means that the owner of the lot faces a $150 fine. That is an official, ongoing, enforceable rule. That is an ordinance, whereas a resolution is simply them agreeing to do something. And if we think back to our childhood days of watching, uh, watching Schoolhouse Rock, uh, how does a bill, uh, be, or an ordinance in this case, become a law? It has to be voted on at least more than once. Now, I wish I could tell you a consistent number here, but the issue is that every city and every county in the state is allowed to set their own number for the number of times it needs to be voted on. Now, that said, it's always going to be at least more than one. Usually, it'll work like this. There'll be a first reading where the name and of the legislation, the name of the ordinance or resolution is listed, uh, and the idea of what it's supposed to do is talked about. They'll have a basic discussion with each other in an open meeting, and then they'll vote on it. So let's say this first reading, they talk about it, they discuss it, and then they vote on it, and it passes four to one. But it's not actually passed yet. Usually they'll have another meeting where they will open up to the public, even though it's already public, the meeting itself is public. This one will be specifically designed to get the public to talk just about this one issue, where they will then hear from the public about what they think about the potential new ordinance. And then on the third, uh, the third meeting, they will have a final reading 
where they will read out any amendments that are necessary for the ordinance. They'll all have a final debate and discussion on it. They may bring in the city attorney to talk about if it will be legal or not, and they'll hold a final vote. And let's say then the final vote, it passes three to two, three in favor, two against. At that point, then it will become ordinance. There's two things you absolutely want to get as a reporter. You want to make sure that you're getting a copy of the full language of the proposed ordinance. Now, this will be an official legalese style language. It'll be a lot of whereas the city council agrees that dot, 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 dot. Whereas on the fifth day of October, dot, 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 dot. Now, the issue is that this is really confusing language, especially for common folk, for me and you, for anybody who's not a lawyer. So what you're also going to want to get is the memorandum. Usually they will pu publish a memorandum along with the actual language of the bill itself, and the memorandum will explain what it does in real simple English. One is the official language, one is the summarized language. Both are very important to have. So now we have to start digging in deeper. We have to start looking at closer ideas because this is where our stories are gonna actually come from. Stuff that's being voted on, stuff that the community is unhappy about. This is where the story is actually going to develop. So what do we do now? Well, the first big thing we wanna do is look for impact. We wanna talk, we wanna think about this new law or this new ordinance or this new resolution. How is it actually going to impact everybody's life day to day? Who is it going to specifically impact the most? Who stands to gain or to lose from this? We always want to make sure that this is framed in an idea of impact. We want to look if there's any conflict. Are there any city council members or county commission members who disagree with each other over this issue? Are there people in the community who disagree over this issue? We want to make sure we're focusing on that. And finally, everything kind of comes down to money. Push comes to shove, all of this is important because we're talking about taxpayer money. For example, in uh, one of the previous classes, I was talking to a student about a Bullock County Commission meeting, or city, sorry, it was a Statesboro uh, City Council uh, meeting that they had gone to, and they had talked about new drain covers and how the most exciting thing to happen was that they were talking about new drain covers which the student thought was pretty boring until I asked them, well, how much did they say it was gonna cost? And they said $6 million. $6 million is a lot of money for drain covers. And so that's going to be a big part of the story. That $6 million of the city's budget is going to be used on new drain covers. Anytime anything new is passed, legislation or, or, or uh, ordinance wise, you wanna ask how much money is it gonna cost? Or how much money is it gonna make? Everything involves money. If you're going to go the school board route, school board meetings are notoriously all about me or all about money. How much they're going to have in budgets for hiring new teachers, how much they're going to have in pension for retiring teachers, how much money they have for new equipment for laboratory space and for computers, for building new schools, building and renovating cafeterias, etc. Everything comes down to money. So no matter what it is your story ends up being from the meeting that you're covering, you want to make sure that you're attaching it to the idea of money. All right, with that, I look forward to seeing what you report on. And next class, we'll end up talking about uh, how government at the local level is actually structured.